All right, guys, what is up? Uh, VV back again with a video. Uh, some more theory crafting. Why not, right? Um, today we're going to be talking about like the attack threshold, the the point at which you have to get over to swing with your characters. This is just going to be kind of like a general knowledge style video. We're, we're going to theory craft a little bit, but there's not. It really comes down to knowing the meta. It's not so much you know, you're you're not going to have to know some kind of special. Um, you know, mathematical equation. You're just going to know, like, okay, what is my le what is the leader's uh, power, and then you get to go from there. And then, what kind of cards can be in their hand? How much dawn they have open? It's it's very much situational. So let's get right into it. Okay, look, we're just going to talk for a second here. Excuse me. Let's talk about a leader with five thousand base life. Okay, just for the sake of the video. I understand and and understand that whatever the leader's life is, just add that to whatever I'm add add a to it whatever their life is or subtract so example ex for example if a leader's life is six thousand like like with a uh, white beard or edward newgate well everything i'm saying just add one thousand to that okay so let's get into it so for a base life a base leader life of five thousand right away your attack needs to be five thousand right only attack for five thousand if you have no other choice right or, or you're trying to get a one thousand counter out of your opponent's hand that's the idea. If you swing for 5,000, that is the first threshold, right? Because at least you're, you're eliciting, you're, you're making, you're making it where now they have to elicit a response against what you've done. They, they have to do something because of what you just did, right? Okay. Over to the right of that, that uh, first point, an attack of 6,000 is good for forcing your opponent to use a 2K counter. Right now, yeah, for the 5K, they they just use a 1K counter. Those are much easier to come by. They're much more prevalent. You, you see them in the in the in the meta much more. But that's fine. At least you're getting a card out of their hand, or they're taking a life, right? Or you're, you know you're making them lose a life. An attack of 6,000 is very good for forcing a 2K counter out of their hand, right? Or two 1K counters, or some type of event, right? We'll talk about events after this slide. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, the third bullet point, going back to the left in the middle there, an attack of 7,000, we're, we're right here, an attack of 7,000 is good for forcing a 2K counter and a 1K counter out of your opponent's hand or an event. Right, so 7,000, we're going to talk about that more later, very good number, because now they can't just use one card to get out of it unless it is an event card, in which case... You've really got them out of a strong event potentially, because think about if they had to use a 2K or a two cost 4K counter on a 7,000 attack. You're really, you know, hurting them. They're, they're not getting much cost much cost efficiency. But again, we'll talk about events in a, in a second here. Let's go to the next point, over to the right. An attack of 8,000 is good for forcing your opponent to use two 2K counters, or a two cost event that is typically a 4k counter right because then you know a 4k counter gets you to 9,000 life so you know remember you have to beat their attack to survive okay down to the bottom left an attack of 9,000 is good for forcing an event and a 1k or 2k counter out of your opponent's hand um though there are some events that block for 5k um and well again like i said we'll talk about events in just a second and then an attack of 10,000 K is just good. Okay. Uh, or excuse me. An attack of 10 K or 10,000 is just always good. Cause it forces either a lot. It, it forces a large investment if they want to block it. So let's talk about the events real quick. This is the most important thing you need to know for what we're talking about right now. You need to know who you're playing against and what they could potentially have access to. So, in other words, if I'm playing against a red deck, it doesn't matter if it's Whitebeard, if it's if it's Luffy, you you don't know what your opponent's going to put in their deck, unless you do know, like unless it's your friend and now you know, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, but that's not the point. We don't know in a tournament setting, right? So, notice there are four zero-cost counters, and these are 3,000 uh, power counters, or, or 3k counters, but it usually comes at the cost of, of pitching a card from your hand. So, you're kind of two for one of yourself. It's almost like you're using two 2k counters in this instance right um or a 2k and a 1k right so um you never know if they're going to have that but <clears throat> excuse me that one isn't as um harmful in my mind because if you have two cards in hand then you're going to be assuming that they have at least three to four thousand counter power if they are 
tapped out. Now I need to start saying that right now and mentioning that now. Notice this is zero dawn. If you ever see your opponent used up their entire turn and they have one, two, three, four, or more dawn open, then you know they're probably sitting on defensive uh, um, events, right? Counter events, which, I mean, yeah, you still have to swing, right? To get them out of their hand, but at least you know what to expect. With this card, you will never know, even if they're tapped out. But like I said, in order to use these cards, they have to have two cards in hand, right? Like, cause, cause I know, uh, you know, I, I think, I think all of them, I, I'd have to check, but I'm pretty sure all of them require you to discard a card trash a card from your hand to use their effect so you're using two cards uh someone correct me in the bottom if i'm wrong on that but you get the idea so you don't even have to play around these you just know oh they have two cards in hand well i'm going to assume they have a 2k and a 1k or a 2k and a 2k or two 1ks right you can kind of assume it that way okay next is a one cost cards these, these are all one cost counters here you've got one cost 2k counters one cost 3k counters and a few one cost 4k counters that have to meet a certain you know, uh, they have to meet a certain criteria in order to go off, right? So f the first g group here, this first wave of them, of the one cost counters, with Power Mochi, I think Whiteout, um, you know, this whole pile here is something you know to play around, right? If they have one Dawn open, they probably have something on this page right here, right? So you just have to swing accordingly. But, you know, if you know the meta, you can make a pretty good educated guess. For example, if they have only two life left, well, Radical Beam says that if you're, you know, if you have two life and you use this ability or effect or whatever, you're going to gain 4,000. So you can kind of, you kind of know what to expect. Uh, guard point is a little tricky because it's a 3k counter for one. And then those two under guard point, you know, the uh, happy... Happiness Punch and um, Arrow, those are minus 3,000, so they effectively work as a 3,000 counter, even though um, the Happiness Punch you have to split up, right? Get minus 2,000 that guy, minus 1,000 that guy. The concept still remains the same. So, um, yeah, hopefully that explains that aspect of it. You know, you can't, you only... You have to go on what they have on the field if they and how many cards they have in hand. How much Dawn do they have open and how many cards they have in hand? That will determine everything. So, but but I will say, you know, if they ever leave more than two Dawn open, you just almost don't know what to expect. Because what if they have two of uh, these barrier cards? You know, this this front uh, front right uh, one cost 4K counter barrier card in hand on, in Dressrosa. You don't know, right? So if they ever have more than one Dawn open, you have no idea what they can block for, to be honest. And, and especially depending on how many cards they have in hand. Um, but then let's, let's go through the 2K counters real quick, or the, the two cost counters and, and a few 3K counters, or three cost counters, excuse me. So you have your general two cost counters here, Love, Love, Melody, Impact Wave, the two, uh, Thunder Bagwas, the purple and yellow one, uh, Punk Gibson, and and Red Hawk. These were like the first two uh, two cost 4K counters. You have one for every color, and then they have an additional effect tacked on. Uh, that's all fine. But as far as the counters go, if you see someone with two Dawn open, you can pretty much guarantee it's going to be one of these cards or the or an equivalent card. Like for example, for Punk Gibson, now green decks are splashing Spiderweb, right? Which is a two cost that says you know plus four thousand power to a leader or character, and then it you can lift two character, lift a character up with it as well, um, make them active. So, and then real quick, you know, I do have to talk about Ikaku Sovereignty and Hell's Judgment because those are kind of in a, in a their own little bubble. If you're playing against a yellow deck, you have to be able to expect to swing for five thousand if you're trying to get around Ikaku Sovereignty, right? For for plus five thousand, right? So you have to take that in consideration. And with Hell's Judgment. If you're playing against a purple deck, well, they could have a Thunder Bagua, or they could have a Hell's Judgment. Or, if they have three Dawn open, they might have this next card, um, the, uh, oh shoot, I forgot what it's called, the Nez Palm, I think it's called ne Nez, hang on one second, I got it right here, Nez Palm Cannon, right? So, let's move over to that real quick. These, these on the right here, the, uh, the, the, excuse me, <clears throat> the, uh, Three Sword Style Onigiri, the Death Wink, the Nez Palm and the Diable Jambe Jushu Jushot, however you say that, the yellow one. These are three costs plus six thousands. So it's just good to understand. Okay, oh, they have three Dawn open. 
and they have how many cards in hand? Okay, well, I can I can assume, or I can, you know, it's not so much assume, but it's possible. It's they potentially have this or this or this, right? It's just good to know these cards and to know what's going on in the meta. Okay, so just to wrap it up, this isn't going to be a long video because th there's not a, a lot to talk about. People have done good videos on this. They go over like all the crazy math on it. Um, but I just want to go over... The most important thing are these three thresholds that you should be going for and then making educated um, decisions around how much Dawn they have open and how many cards are in their hand, right? So, for example, and again, this is against a leader with 5,000 base power. If you're going against a white beard, then just add 1,000 every single one of these. Okay, so 5,000 power attack is your very first threshold so that you can swing and make them do a response or they lose life, right? Now, the second threshold is actually at 7,000, not at 6,000. You know, oh, but wait, at 6,000, it, it forces them to use a 2K counter. Yes, that is true. However, at 7,000, a 2K counter doesn't work anymore. And they're going to have to double up or use a uh, event. Now, conversely, or maybe not conversely, but if you think about it like this, if they are completely tapped out with Dawn, if, if all of their Dawn is rested where you know they have to use counters, okay, well then swinging for 7,000 is very relevant because if you swing for 7,000, they have to use two cards from hand to defend or else they take the life point, right? Um, and, and that's kind of the idea here. Next one is 8,000. 8,000 is not quite a threshold because, again, it's potentially just two cards again. Right, so if it took them two cards to get out of a seven thousand, it still only takes them two cards to get out of an eight thousand. Two two K counters, and for those who might be saying, "Yeah, but a two K counter is stronger than one K," well, no. To defend a seven thousand, a lot of times people have to ditch two two K counters, so you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. Right, you're you're really, you know, crushing their hand by swinging for seven when they're again. This is when they have no dawn open or anything like that. Um, and I, and I will say, let me go back just. Uh, real quick uh, to um, these first three not many people run those first three cards okay the 3000 counter ones for zero the blue one might be an exception I think it's gum gum rain that might be an exception but again you have to know what you're playing against you have to understand what the, what the meta entails what are people running right so again sorry about that back to this 8000 is a strong hit but it's it's still only going to get two um, cards maximum out of their hand, right? I mean, it could potentially get three. Let me say that it could. Hey, it could potentially get four if we're going by potential, right? We're going. You know, we need to theory craft. We need. We need to brainstorm and think outside the box of like. Let's assume that our opponent has a very good hand. We need to play accordingly. So that's where we get to nine thousand being the next threshold. Because here, one more thing I'll say about the 8,000 is if they have uh, one or two Dawn active, well, guess what? They're probably just going to use a single card and eat your entire attack. They're just going to use one Impact Wave or Punk Gibson or whatever, and they're going to eat your attack. 9,000 gets past that. 9,000 is the third and final threshold. 9,000 is a very, very safe attack that will... Typically speaking, it will get at it, it it will bare minimum get two cards from them if they're trying to defend it. Outside of Ikaku Ikaku sovereignty, outside of the Ikaku Ikaku sovereignty and the three cost um, counters, these ones on the on the right here, right? Okay, sorry, my phone is going crazy over here. Some kind of thunderstorm warning. Warning, my apologies. Okay. So again, nine thousand power is is the the that is the sweet spot in my opinion. If they have dawn open, right? Assuming they have no dawn open, seven thousand is an absolutely beautiful attack point where you know you're getting bare minimum two cards. Like realistically, you're you're getting two cards and they're going to have to, you know, they're paying for that. Nine thousand though means even if they have two dawn open, which is typically what you see, if they have two dawn open, you know. 
you're getting two cards. Bare minimum two cards for them to survive this or to, to not take this this damage. Um, and then again, the the final threshold technically would be 11,000 if you want to go to the fourth threshold. And I would say that will only become one if, if you start seeing people using more and more of these three cost counters. I, I don't see the three cost counters uh, popping up anytime soon, but it is possible, especially in certain decks, like in uh, purple green, we're starting to see them you know, be able to, with, with, with the purple green crocodile deck, the film deck, they're able to untap, you know, two Dawn just for free at the end of their turn. So leaving one more open gets them to this three number. We'll have to see what happens there. Again, that's just going to come down to understanding, learning the meta, knowing what to expect. So, okay, I, that's pretty much it, guys. Like I said, anything above 9,000, you're, you're in good you're, you're going to be getting some cards out of their hand. And that's what you want. So the reason I'm even talking about, well, why do I want to get cards out of their hand? Because you want to get as many cards out of their hand as efficiently as possible. Like, think of it like this. If it takes me, like, five cards, we're just talking theoretically, hypothetically. If it takes me five cards to get six cards out of their hand, well, it took me five, and I got six from them. If it took me five cards and I only got three cards out of their hand, ah, you know, that hurt me, right? I, I'm always trying to outvalue. I'm trying to be more efficient than my opponent always, right? You're trying to eke out every little advantage you can so that adds up in the end you can win. And in this case, when you're attacking, think about what's going on. Your card is already on the ground, right? It's already on the field, rather. So it, by attaching two Dawn to it, how much, how much did that cost you from your hand? Nothing. You've attached two Dawn, and you're swinging, right? So let's just let's just pretend you have a 5,000 cost, uh, a, a leader. Let's say your leader's 5,000 power, right? If you have a 5,000 power leader down, and you put two Dawn under him, and swing for 7,000, and they have to use, let's just say they defended, and they had no Dawn open. Let's say they used uh, one of the zero cost. Let's say they used one of these zero cost uh, 3Ks where they, where they have to pitch a card. Well, that took them two cards to defend my zero cards, right? So that's the efficiency we're going for. And that's why it's good to at least under, <clears throat> excuse me, at least get an understanding of what these numbers mean. The, the thresholds, in my opinion, other people's opinions might vary on this and everything changes with meta, everything changes with new cards that come out. But in currently, in my opinion, 5,000, 7,000, and 9,000, those are the three thresholds you're going for. 5K just to make them do something, right? Like, okay, you're going to have to give me a card here period, right? You're going to have to give me a card. Now, if you're trying to sneak damage through, there there are other things as well, right? Like just to mention real quick, like say they have zero cards in hand, or no, let's say they have one card in hand. Let's, let's do it like that first. If they have one card in hand and they have a 5,000 power leader, well, how much should you swing for if they have no Dawn open? 7,000. If you swing for 7,000, they can't defend it. It's impossible, right? Um, yeah, excuse me. It is literally, if they have no Dawn open, it, they can't do it because they can't pitch a card with these uh, zero cost ones, right? So that's the idea there. It's good to know these numbers, this math, so that you can get what some people call math wins, right? Where at the, okay, if it's at the end of the game, they have no life cards remaining. They have two cards in hand, no blockers, and I can swing for, you know, this and this, you can you can do the math and see like, well, if they only have two cards in hand, I don't care if they have 100 on open, it, it doesn't matter because they just can't survive my attack, right? So anyway, uh, hopefully this helps. I know I didn't get into too much detail like I could have here, but I know some of these, I know there are a ton of these videos out there. And, and all I want to say to wrap up is getting, you know, Everything is situational. Everything is situational. And the more you know about the game and the more you know about stuff like this where you can kind of do the math in your head, and it's not complicated math. It's not complex. It's just very straightforward, basic math. Um, you just have to be able to be aware of it, right? And, and that can help you win games. That this, this kind of stuff can help you win games, guys. Knowing when to swing for what and, and what you should hit. Like I said, 7,000, 9,000, after 5,000, which is just enough to get over the finish line, right? Just enough to make him respond or lose life seven and nine are very important numbers 
Uh, if you disagree, if you think certain numbers are better, please share in the comment section below. I'm always open to learn new stuff. Well, thanks for listening, guys, uh, for, for staying this long. If you did, please don't, uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what you heard and saw. And until next time, guys, peace.